Hey guys, Rich from Over the Fender Garage. Well, we have everything put together for its last go round. Going through and checking everything, making sure everything's tight and right before I get to painting this stuff. I still got to do this again. So I keep forgetting about it, doing other stuff, but I have to get on that really soon. But everything else here fits really good. This here, when it gets bolted up, it'll be tight. I got a tiny bit marked where I gotta just shave off a tiny, tiny bit. So, but everything else is good. All fits nice. I got all the fenders lined up and everything. So everything is good. Cabs all bolted down tight. Kind of just going through, make sure everything fits, all the body lines are all matching, stuff like that. It's better to do this now than paint it and find out something's wrong. So it's always a good idea to do this. Rear balance is on, it's, it's bolted on there. All fits really nice, nice and tight. It's pretty much level across the back. Exhaust system comes out right where it's supposed to. So everything's come out beautiful. Gas filler works. So I've got the bed in its spot. It's not bolted down. It doesn't need to be. It's not like the, the cab or it's on rubber pad. So it's basically it's just sitting here. But it's in its hole so it's lined up. Okay. My final check on... The wheels, check on my back spacing. So now I know what my back spacing is. My thing, my rear end is not centered yet. You can tell by that caliper. The, that caliper. So I gotta bring the rear end over to the left side a little bit. So it's centered up. And then I gotta make little wheel flares for inside here, wheel tubs. I had cut the old ones off because of the way they come up at that angle, you have to tuck the tire away in. So I cut that off, I'm gonna make a flat piece and then down. So that's simple, not a, not a big deal for that. It'll just bolt on in the same place as the fender bolts on. And then the bottom, I'll use some screws and screw it on. So none of that gets welded on there, so that's easy to do. <clears throat> but everything else is on here. Everything looks good. It fits. It's tight. It's right. So the only thing I don't have yet, as you can see, is the hood and this piece on here yet. But everything else is awesome. Fits good. I gotta fit this little down here. It's hitting the very, very bottom of the front of this uh, rocker panel. So I'm gonna grind a little bit of that off. Could just be a piece of filler on there. But the next thing I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm gonna throw in all the interior for its last test fit before I paint it. So that's done. And basically, it's going to come apart, wet sand it, and paint it. So let's get into throwing this stuff all in here. Let's give it its last test fit. And it's ready to go. So we'll be ready for painting really soon. Now I can pull this bed back off. Get it back a little bit. I'll leave it on the chassis. I'll just pull it back a couple of feet. That's why I painted this piece here. It's because I don't have to worry about trying to get paint on this and paint on the cab at the same time. So I won't be bumping into one or the other with spray gun. So I went ahead and painted this one. I'll tape this edge off so I can paint this piece of the quarter panel. And then I just got to worry about the back side of the cab. So that's why I did that that way. So let's get on that interior. Let's throw it in there, check everything out. And it's ready to go for paint. Yes!
run around and I'm going to start doing my checklist and nutting and bolting the truck. So we've got all these bolts to go through and check and make sure everybody's tight. So, got my list. Got some of the stuff tightened already, but I'll go through that, check it off on here. If it's not written on the list, I'll write it on the list and put a check mark next to it. And that way you make sure you don't have parts falling off something when it's done. So this is really fun, this is exciting. So I'll do some time lapse of this and that'll be it on that. And then I get the drive shaft in and should be pretty much the last thing I gotta do under here besides tighten the bed after it's painted. But I have a little bit of time. I figure I would do this part, knock it out, <clears throat> get ready for some paint job. So let's run around and tighten up all these bolts. Make sure everything's tight, torque them down. <clears throat> we do have a couple things like this to put on. And there's just a couple of bolts and stuff that are missing. I didn't get in there while I was putting other stuff on. I got another bolt right here. And what they are is this goes on the sway bar like that to hold the sway bar so it can't move back and forth. So it stays basically centered up in there. So I'm gonna put those on. And I got one bolt I did not put up in the top of that one. So I gotta put that one in. Basically that's it for missing stuff up here. That is a couple bolts missing in the back. That I gotta put in there. Got a little bag right here. This is what's missing. So we'll run through and get all those on there at the same time. So let's get on her.
Okay, now we've got the entire truck sanded down from the guide coat. And it all came out looking pretty good here. We got, there's a few spots with that little spot right there. There's a couple little light spots, like right here. I'll take and 
I'll do a couple of coats on this before I do the entire truck to build that up a tiny bit because that's all it is is just the a mill or two of paint will take care of that but it all comes out it looks good I don't see anything bad so now the next thing to do after that guide coat has been sanded off is go and look at it and see because there there's a few right here that's from when I was sanding that hit it with the sandpaper there's one there, there's one there this is kind of the last last chance right here to catch any pinholes so now I got to just walk around and look for all those one right there there's a couple right here and I'll check the edges as you see me sanding it in time lapse I stayed away from all the body lines and then I did the body line last so everything came out nice and I used my hand cupped over the top of it with the paper long so that would bring that all down level but there's one right here that's a dip I'll have to put some spot putty in that one <clears throat> See, there's a little one right there. There's a couple right there. But for the most part, it came out looking really good. I'm very happy with that. Let me just run around to do this and go after all those. And it will be basically ready for its last coat of primer. And I can get a wet sand on that primer and it will be ready for paint. It'd be great to see it painted. I've already done the spot on this. I'll look at it again. There's a couple scratches right here. Just kind of give the whole thing a general look over. So if you miss them now, they're going to be in your paint job. And we don't want that. And there's always going to be a few. You can't always catch them all but you can get a good 95% of them. And it's something you're gonna drive. It's not really that crucial, but I try to do everything I do. I try to do it up to a show quality paint job because you're practicing. Every time you practice, you get better, you get better, you get better. So I treat them all the same way when it comes to a paint job. No reason not to, even the welding, everything because you end up with a better quality product in the end. So, because I mean, if you just throw it together, throw a paint job on it, it looks good. Well, you're gonna have problems down the road and it's miserable driving an old car that is constantly breaking down. So it's just better to take your time, go over it, get everything. Don't rush it, no reason to rush them. And you will have a nice old vehicle that you can take pride in. And you can jump on a highway and you can drive anywhere you want without breaking down all the time. Because breaking down sucks. One right there. And you can tell. I don't want to touch it too much. I've got it all washed. But for this part, you can touch it a little bit because it's going to be washed one more time. See right here, there's a few. You can see there's not a lot of them compared to what it was the first go round. See right here, I missed that area. One right there. And one right there, there's a dip right there. This spot I had to fix. I had dropped this door, whoops. So I had to fix that one. Other than that, that all looks good. So, we're good on doing that spot putty, finishing those all up. Hopefully get it ready for tape and get it primed today if I can. I'd like to get to that point, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. So, let's get on getting this done.
there it is. It is all in primer. This is the last go round of sanding. I am ready to take it and start wet sanding. I've done all the body work, did the body work up to 120, then did the uh, primer on that, sanded that primer with the spot putty down to a 320. I did the next coat of primer with the fill primer to get the rest of the pinholes and make sure everything's clean and straight. I did that one down to a 320. And then I went real, real quick 400 over the top of that before I primed it again to make sure there was no scratches because if you take a 320 and you take a 400 over the top of the 300, the 320, any scratches that are smaller than the, or uh, bleh, that are larger than the 320 will show. So you can get all those, those out of there. And I did the guide coat on that one so I could find all the pinholes, as you see in the, the time-lapse ones. But now I am ready to start wet sanding. I'm gonna grab a 400. I'll knock it down with a 400 real quick. Make sure there's no real bad spots in it. And then I'll jump to a 600 on the wet sanding. I'll probably do the 600 on my DA real quick. 400 with it too. There's a lot of, a lot of flare areas. So you, can, you can do a quick one with the DA and just knock everything off before you start handing it. And then we'll get down to an 800, which will be all hand, because it's a pearl candy. I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth and clean. I'll leave all the paper and stuff on it. All, everything's wrapped. I'm going to leave all this. I'm not going to take any of this stuff off. I'll get it all wet, sanded out. I'll wash it up again, and then I'll pull all this stuff off of here and then finish cleaning up everything and get ready to retape it tomorrow because I should be able to knock all this out today. Sweat sanding is not too bad usually if you don't have a lot of dry spray in it. And this one came out really nice because it was cool out. So shouldn't be a problem or an issue unless I find something I don't like to go back and repair. But I don't think so because I've gone over it really good. But that's what we're going to get on is the wet sanding right now. Knock that out of here. Get this thing cleaned up. And the next thing we'll be doing is painting it. Oh, I can't wait to see. Whew.
got our first pass with the 400 and it is really, really nice. Don't see any orange peel or dry spray on any of it. All came out really nice. And that was just a quick run, not even heavy sand in it. You can see right there, a little bit not sanded, just because that was a quick to test it, see what it all looked like. And it all came up really nice. So now we'll get on doing this all with 600 wet. And I'll do most of this by hand so I can get everything, not miss anything. So I'll take the DA and I'll do a quick over the big spots again, but I will hand sand everything too. The little spot like that, I missed it, but it, it was lightly done. But there's absolutely no dry spray in this, which is awesome. The dry spray sometimes gets in there and it sucks to get rid of. But this one's good, so let's jump on the 600 and blast this out with some 600. guys are wet sanding you want to see a neat little trick when you're wet sanding and you're sanding 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 and the paper goes <laughs> you gotta fold it back up and all that take it like this because this is my last go around with wet sanding I want to make sure I don't get a groove in it while I'm wet sanding it so I glued this together with some spray glue I'll show you this has been soaking for about 15 minutes or so. So I'll take it and wipe it off. Let's get some of the water off there. I'm going to take it over here. I'm going to take that. It is moist. And I'm going to take some spray glue. Just a light coat. You'll make sure you're doing it in the clean area little coat on there and then take your paper of course I can't see it because I'm on the camera I should be able to get close enough here put it on there like that and then stick it down in that spray glue I'm not going to stick it all the way until I get 
over here. I can put the camera down. Let me put this up here. Try to make sure don't get any on the vehicle. Take that and stick this right down in there like that. Now if you have sandpaper that will not fall off while you're using it. It works so nice. <clears throat> you don't want to get a lot on there because you don't want to have a big clap somewhere of spray glue. Just real, real light coat. Just enough to hold it. And you'll have sandpaper you're not always fighting with. But, a little tip. Alright, off the wet sanding with 800 so we can get ready to get this thing painted. Alright, let's hit this. This 800. My water bottle does have soap in it. I've got a couple of drips in there. Makes the paper slide better. Just take this, fold it up, grab the edges. Stand away. Get this nice and clean. And this one here, I'll use nothing but this block. <clears throat> Keep the circles going. Always want to do it in circles. In case you want to go straight on the body lines. <laughs> this one should come up perfect. Already looks good with the 600, <clears throat> but I just want to make sure that there's no scratches in it. This, this. Especially along the edges, it tends to be the spot that doesn't get done. <clears throat> Just a quick one over the top of this here. <clears throat> Keep your fingers tight together. Go in circles, ever straight. And this should be perfect now. see anything that's left, but there shouldn't be anything. Should be perfect. The nice thing about having it glued like this, the paper doesn't wear out as fast. It goes along a lot further. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Always want to keep it really wet. Good, right there. Uh -oh. Okay, that one should be good. Let that dry out. You'll be able to see anything that's left. But you look down this one here, where I haven't wiped it yet. You can see, you gotta avoid getting too much of this. That's why you try to keep going in a circle, oblong circle, because you don't want this to stop and then start, and stop and start, because you'll have these in it and they'll be deep. As long as you're going in an oblong circle, there's not enough where you're going sideways like this that it'll leave a groove. Because you will leave a groove if you go up and stop and up and stop with that edge. I'm gonna keep it moving. That's why I go over it again with this. Because this will wipe off any of those that are showing on this right now. So I look at that one, it should be a beautiful, nice sanded finish. So, Let's get on some time lapse and get this done. I want to get this retaped and get the paint in here pretty soon. guys are you ready here it is everything's taped up checked gone over washed cleaned floors washed cleaned everything is ready to go any place I had to fix I fixed it so I could do that I really don't have to open the doors so I didn't do any of that but I taped the window shut and I have plastic on the inside too. You want to try to keep the wind from getting in there and stirring up anything. Even though I got everything clean and then cleaned again, you'll still have a little bit of wind twirling around. So I got to put something in those. The, uh, you want to seal it up as much as you can. And one thing that is crucial when you're doing candy because there are so many coats of paint. If you're doing a true candy, you have to cover the plastic. Do not let any plastic to where it is. I still want to have to cover this. I gotta put a piece on that. But if I were to put candy on this and you know, the base, base coat, the, uh, your first coats of pearl and then your candy and then your clear, this plastic will start to release and that shit will start blowing all over the place. It'll get in your paint. So always got to cover any kind of plastic. Now I've already taken the one off wrong bottom. That was the worst one, so I got rid of that one. That one's going to stay. It's all clean. Everything's been blown. Blew everything out. But even the paper. You hear how brittle that is? paper that's fresh. 
you really got to watch out for that. You do not want any kind of plastic showing, especially in an area like this. If you just blow that stuff right off once it dries, it'll be a mess. Been there, done that once. That was it. So, but everything else is ready to go. Behind the grill doesn't matter because I didn't get any primer on that too much. It stayed really clean. And then I have another piece over the top of this. But if you go underneath it, you might not be able to see it. But you can see there's only a tiny bit of primer on there that's not going to bother anything. See, it's not coming off. So I put another one over the top and I'll pull this one down. Right now I'm letting the floor dry before I pull this down. Can't do the bottom taping or paper until the floor is dry. So that'll be tomorrow morning before I do that. But other than that, see you've got all the holes covered up. I didn't get that one, which that one won't be a big deal. But everything else is covered up. One inside here. So, we are basically good to go. And we are ready to start doing some paint. The thing I didn't do was the cowl here, because the one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to paint that lip on the cowl panel. So, I don't, I'm not gonna be able to paint the cowl on the truck. That was a dumb mistake, but that happens. So I've got it hanging back here. So when I paint the roof, I can turn around, come back and paint this. It's kind of one of those things you have pieces off, certain pieces, as long as you're doing it at the same time because your pressure will be the same, you know, your fluid, everything will be the same. So as long as you're doing it, you're clouting, just make sure you count your coats. So see, it's get up there, do the roof, turn around, come back down, do that. So I know I'm not missing one. So that won't be an issue there. And I've got it high enough that I can walk through here. I won't hit it. So it's, oh, barely. I have to lift it up a little bit higher. But I'll make sure I, I don't hit it. Because the only thing I have to do is get up onto the bed to get up onto the roof, so. But you know, you can't miss it when you turn around to walk off. Ah, uh, there it is, gotta paint it. Uh, that little piece right there, all I gotta do is get some paint on it. It's not a big deal, and the jams in the, the bed. The tailgate, I will do separate. The bumpers, I'll do separate. That stuff is all sitting over here. I'll do all this at the same time. So you gotta mark how many coats you did. Tailgate really is not gonna show. Bumpers will not show if they're off a little bit. But as long as the tailgate is close, it won't be seen. Cause you know, you only have this little piece here and that little piece there. And you got the balance and all that kind of stuff. But if it doesn't match, you could always do a break off right here. Spray, do fade off on that or fade off onto the tailgate from here. But 99% of the times you won't be able to see it as long as you count coats on something like that because it's very small. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, anything else? Uh, I got the scoop and all that stuff. You noticed I've moved some stuff here. Been trying to figure out a different way. So I've been between breaks, I've been moving stuff. Kind of a little shop rearranged. But I've got the hood scoop to do still. I've got the mirrors to do. And it's just too many little pieces to try to do with a vehicle. So we'll do all these after with all this stuff. We get the main section done and then we jump into this. Uh, these pieces here, this is the grill piece that you saw me taking off. I'm gonna paint both these black. Oops, now I just gotta fix that. I'm gonna paint these black instead of having the color chuck. So they kind of disappear when you look through the grill. So, got that. Let's see if I nicked it. Nope, no nick. But you look down at 
It's all dry now, but when it's wet, it's the best time is when you get this thing clean and you look down the edges of it. That'll be tell you if you need to fix something, if something bothers you or not. But this came out pretty good. It's a good 98%. But it's ready to go. I'm rambling on. So it's time to go sit back in a chair, relax. And this is what we're going to be doing tomorrow morning. So be here bright and early. I'm counting on y'all to be here. So let's get on this. <laughs>